Hey everybody, Austin here again with another playthrough. Um, this is sort of a new slash old series I'm gonna be doing here on my channel. <laughs> it's a long story. Uh, so for those of you guys that have been following me for a while, uh, you know that I've updated my current playthrough format uh, where there's a lot of editing, lots of pop-up boxes, and I'll zoom in on like important things I'm talking about and stuff like that. Uh, lots of editing, lots of practicing involved, and they're very, very time-consuming to put together. Uh, outside of that kind of content, which is rare, uh, I mainly do live streams, and you know, I was trying to think of other ways to give you guys more content, and I was sort of going back through the old types of videos I used to do, and I was like, you know what, uh, there, there are some games that don't deserve the current Let's Play treatment, like Power Rangers. I mean, as much as I like this game, it's not a very complex game. There's not much to, like, really focus on and hone in on in terms of, like, tips and strategies. It's a very bare-bones game. Very fun game, but it doesn't deserve all the time and effort, uh, with, you know, with all the editing and stuff like that. It doesn't, it's not worth my time to, to put together, like, a, a big Let's Play. I need to do Let's Plays of, like, really challenging games where I can really focus in on strategies and, and actually help people through the game. Like, anybody should be able to get through Power Rangers. They don't need my help. But people still like watching these playthroughs. They like hearing me talk about the games, maybe get my opinions on them. And so what we're going to be doing from here on out uh, on my channel, or at least for the near future, is try to pick some low-hanging fruit, and, like Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for Super Nintendo, stuff that doesn't deserve the full-blown Let's Play treatment that I, I give more difficult games. Um, but these will be like my old Let's Plays, where, again, there's basically no editing, it's just me playing through a game, providing commentary. Um, it could be related to the game, it could just be related to other things, it could be talking about opinions, which I don't really focus too much on on my, my walkthrough focus Let's Plays. Um, so, yeah, we're gonna be dubbing this series the Quick Play series, um, <laughs> which is kind of like backwards in a way because some games like these are still like an hour long so it's still like a long play I don't know man I've, my channel's been around for so long and I've never been very creative with names I think I've kind of dug myself a hole with naming but huge shout outs to uh, Azusa slash Karsten uh, Retro Kevin and Uber Disco in my discord server who actually uh, helped out picking that name so thank you guys very much for that um, and yeah we're gonna play through Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. Uh, for those of you guys wondering, we are actually playing this on the Mr. FPGA. I do have real Super Nintendo consoles. Three of them, actually, I think. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're actually using the Mr. It's nice and easy. Uh, it makes capturing super crisp uh, and, and simple, and it looks great. It sounds great. It plays pretty much exactly like the real thing. So, and um, <laughs> speaking of the real thing, we're actually using a 8-bit uh, Doe SN30 Pro controller on this video, which basically has the Super Nintendo controller layout. It's a very nice controller, and it's it's my favorite controller to use on the Mr. So, yeah, uh, we're at the title screen here. Uh, if you actually go to the options menu, what's actually kind of interesting, it defaults to mono sound. Uh, I noticed that when I was playing on real hardware a couple weeks ago. Um, just to preface this, I did actually run through this game a couple weeks ago. Some details will be a little foggy because I've played a lot of games since, but uh, I did actually run through this game, which is why we're picking this as the first game in this quick play series. Um, you can enter a password here. Um, every level will give you a password after you complete it, and then uh, you also get some bonus passwords passwords, which I'll, I'll explain at the end of the video, but you'll get those after the end credits. Um, but let's go to, uh, let's go hit exit and let's just jump into the game and just kind of see how this goes. This is going to be kind of weird because like normally for my, my new let's play format, I practice, 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 practice. I go through games like, you know, eight to 10 plus times before doing the video. And uh, I've got all sorts of like tips and strategies to talk about and things like that. But this I've only played through once in the last couple of weeks. And the last time I played through it was like five or six years ago when I did my original Let's Play of it. Um, and yeah, so we will probably be a little bit uh, rusty here. But uh, God, man, I love the soundtrack in this game. It's so good. It's got a killer soundtrack, honestly. Um, speaking of which, I need to actually grab the music from this and post it on my game music channel. Uh, but you have five different characters to to pick from: Trinity, Billy, uh, Jason, Kimberly, uh, Kim, and Zach. And uh, don't mind me, I can't talk. But yeah, um, they each have like slightly different moves. But the the core gameplay for each ranger is pretty much the same. 
uh, in terms of like attacking, jumping, and stuff like that. We'll start off with Jason. We'll just kind of go through all the rangers one by one. Um, basically, one ranger for each of the side scrolling stages, and then uh, we go to the fighting game stages at the end of the game. Very colorful game, too. Like, when you uh, teleport in here, like, it's got this, like, color cycle, this rainbow pattern, which is always very pleasing uh, on on these 16-bit games in particular. But yeah, this is uh, what um, the Japanese would call uh, belt scrollers, where you're basically just moving uh, to the left and right. Uh, there's no Z-axis, it's just X and Y. So you move left, right, and then you can jump up, and you can also duck. Um, so there are stages where there's a lot of vertical movement as well. Uh, there is wall jumping and things like that. You can hang on to railings and whatnot. Um, and uh, I'll just sort of point those out once we get to them. But uh, it starts off as just really a straightforward belt scroller. You can throw enemies, you run into them, and then press forward and uh, the attack button. There's only one attack. Uh, now you do get a bomb, but I don't have one yet. I don't think you can get a bomb as... Uh, just your standard, uh, your standard form, but once you're in ranger form, you can get yourself a bomb. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very, it's a very straightforward game. There's not a whole lot to explain here. Uh, just mash the punch button. Uh, well, actually, I don't usually mash buttons when I play games like these. I try to time my attacks, it's just a, a preferred play style, but you can just keep, like, mashing the button as, as fast as you want. Well, not as fast as you want. I always tell people, don't mash if you don't have to. So this is one of those games where you don't have to mash. So instead of, like, like mashing the button as fast as you can, just, like, tap it lightly. Said tap it constantly, but tap it lightly. Uh, you, you won't wear your hands that way. Um, I do see people playing um, things uh, like like games like these where like they, they, they hammer the button as fast as possible but all they're doing is just making their muscles hurt um, because a lot of those inputs are just being lost because you can only attack so fast so yeah so like when I'm attacking with my sword here I'm just kind of like tap 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 literally and you can't really attack much faster than that so why press the buttons faster than that like don't wear your hands if you don't have to Especially if you're you're an old man like me where your hand <laughs> An old man like me with some health issues and uh, You know your muscles are getting really sore as you age um, So, you know the smarter uh, the, the the better and, and the you know the, the more your your hands and muscles will thank you But yeah, we're in our ranger form now. So basically every levels kind of structured the same way where um, There we go um, Every, sorry, every uh, ranger's level is pretty much structured the same same way, where um, basically halfway through the stage, or like a quarter of the way through the stage, or whatever, uh, you'll turn into your ranger form, and uh, then you'll get uh, some pretty badass attacks. Uh, up in attack, we'll also do a special for each character. Uh, every character's special... Well, I wouldn't say every character special is different. Uh, like, uh, Billy and Trini, I'm pretty sure they have the same kind of like like hard smackdown like that. Um, also, I prefer to do just, like, standard combo attacks in this instead of just doing, like, the heavy attack. Um, so, yeah. I mean, the heavy attack is pretty good, but you actually end up doing more damage if you just do your, your four-hit combo or whatever. Also, these enemies are putties. They're, they're common enemies in the Power Rangers TV series. Um, you know, the different colored putties, uh, have different properties. So the, the purple ones, uh, have, uh, they take quite a few hits. Uh, the gray ones just die instantly, so they, they basically take one hit, and, uh, yeah. On areas where you've got enemies on both sides, you can try to, you know, do what we call in, in beat-em-ups as crowd control. Where you try to get all the enemies on the same side of the screen, it makes life a lot easier. Uh, except for the, uh, the gray putties, it doesn't really matter too much with them, because, again, they just die in one hit. I could just jump kick them if I want, but, like, these guys, I can try to get them on the same side of the screen, um, so I'll hit this guy. Oh, never mind. Another one spawned from the right. That's fine. Not a big deal. Like I said, this game isn't too complex. Uh, like, I don't really need to try to overthink it. But still, there are parts later on in the game where it is beneficial to try to, you know, do well with crowd control. And, uh, this is our first boss. Apparently his name is Bones. And, um, yeah. You can just try to jump kick him and then get in and just, just smack him. Now, your, your rangers, they have uh, quite the range. And so, it's not too hard to get up on these guys and, and smack them. 
Also, again, you can wall jump, which is pretty cool. Not really all that necessary on this boss. Uh, he likes to jump around a lot, so we're just gonna kind of be patient. We don't have to rush in on him. You can kind of just wait for him to jump towards you. He's not a difficult boss, and honestly, most of the bosses in this game aren't all that challenging. Um, but they're still fun. You know, the thing, the thing about Power Rangers is that it's just a fun game. Like, I had this game as a kid, uh, you know, I was... I was actually at just, you know, I want to say just the right age, but just still young enough, um, when Power Rangers first came out, like the TV show, to still enjoy it. I think I was like 10 or 11 when the TV show came out. So my brother and I, we would watch the TV show a lot. And then one Christmas, uh, we ended up getting uh, the Super Nintendo game. Um, we'll go with uh, Kim on level two. And uh, yeah, we played it a lot. You know, I, I enjoyed the TV series back then. I, you know, I didn't watch the TV series too much more after like the, the first run and, and the first movie and stuff like that. Um, so I'm not too familiar with like, you know, other generations of Power Rangers, but this one, you know, I do have a lot of nostalgia for, and we did play it a lot growing up. It was a lot of fun despite its simplicity. Um, still had a lot of fun with it, you know, it was, it was a good little solid Super Nintendo game. Um, and it was enjoyed, enjoyable, so... Yeah, try to do some crowd control, get enemies on the same side of the screen. Now, uh, your, your characters here, you know, some are better than others when they're not in their ranger form. Um, now when you are in your ranger form, it's a little more debatable whether, like, you know, someone's better than, um, than, than someone else. I don't know. Actually, now that I think about it, uh, it actually doesn't look like I can throw those guys, but let me destroy that barrel. Oops. I actually, uh, <laughs> tried ducking down to the right, but I ended up ducking down to the left. Uh, sometimes that this 8-bit Doe controller actually does that, uh, where I, I hit down on the D-pad too hard and it ends up turning me in one direction that I don't want to actually be facing them. But you can actually duck and, and attack those barrels and destroy them. So, getting pretty simple stuff. Now these guys really like to jump around, so doing, you know, like, getting some good crowd control on them is, uh, not super easy. Now I'm, uh, I'm taking some damage, but you can see that my health bar in the bottom is actually depleted a little bit. Now, one thing that's actually really interesting about this, I found out, is that uh, health pickups in this will actually stack. So even though your health bar looks like it's maxed out, it actually goes farther than what you visibly see. So even if you have a full health bar, you still want to pick up all the uh, health pickups that you can. Which you will see me do as we progress through this. Now, unfortunately, my combo didn't finish there. I was hoping she'd get hit, the last hit in. So I can turn around and destroy that barrel that's bouncing, uh, that was bouncing towards me, but... Just jumping over them works too, but... I like to destroy everything I can just because it's fun. You know, video games are supposed to be fun, so... <laughs> Alright, um... Yeah, I'm finding that these, these, uh, these green putties, they just like to jump all over the place, which makes it hard to just get up and throw them in a specific direction. So I'm gonna have to keep that uh, in the back of my head as I'm playing this. So this guy is apparently Gnarly Gnome. Yes, I actually wrote down all the boss names because I haven't watched the TV series since the 90s. I don't know these names. Um, but yeah, Kim's got like a seriously long range weapon. It's it's really nice. And her up and B is actually a long range uh, arrow. Now it's, it's not very powerful. So it's not really worth doing, honestly. And you know, I actually read a walkthrough real quick that said, oh, you can stun enemies with it, but they're not you don't really stun them too much. It's not really worth doing. Um, so just run up to enemies, just attack straight forward, and uh, you'll be good if you're playing as Kim. Now, one of the nice things about this game, one of the things I really like, is that if I wanted to, I could just play as Billy for the entire game. Um, or or uh, someone like that. So, and you know what? I think I actually called uh, the, the main character in the first level Billy, and it, it wasn't. Billy, I think, is actually the Blue Ranger. <laughs> Whoops. Um, sad I didn't actually catch that until level two, but whatever. That's the thing about these, uh, these really casual playthroughs is, like, I don't practice the games and I, uh, you know, I go into them with, like, a, with a scatterbrain. <laughs> so, hopefully you guys are still enjoying the video. Uh, hanging out with me here virtually, uh, with Power Rangers. But, uh, 
But yeah, you can pretty much just- the point is, you can pretty much just play as any character you want for the first five levels, which is cool. If you find a, a ranger that you prefer, you can just, you know, rock them, uh, for the first five stages, and you'll- you'll be fine. I actually think I prefer the Blue Ranger, because he's got a- a really nice, uh... A really nice, uh, like, up and B attack. Or not, well, yeah, his up and B attack, but the- the end of his combo does, like, a bunch of hits. And it's, uh, it's very useful. So, down and B will actually allow you to, uh, you know, drop down via- from- from upper platforms. Alright. Making progress. Oh, we gotta go to the right, not left. We can destroy these. There's gonna be like a power up or two in one of these. There we go. That's health. As you can see my my health meter actually turned uh blue. So, like I said, uh your health bar actually kind of goes up uh beyond the uh, the maximum that you can visually see with your your eyeballs. Alright, let's grab this. You can destroy this guy right here. Oh, that's right. You can't latch on to the, uh, the blue ones. So I should have learned that on the previous section. And I don't think those are, uh, platforms you can wall jump on. So I'm not gonna try to wall jump on them. I'll probably end up falling down to the bottom floor. Oops. Now, grabbing on these is a little weird. I guess you have to just hold up. And that's pretty much it. Uh, now I also have a bomb, and I believe I activate that with the X button. Um, which will actually, I don't know, maybe use that on a boss fight, just for fun. The levels themselves aren't really all that challenging. I mean, neither is, neither are the boss fights. I don't really need the bomb in the boss fights, but I'll show it off. Uh, for those, you know, beginner video game players, um, you know, like if you're showing this game to your kid, <laughs> your kid's playing this for the first time, they haven't played a Super Nintendo game before, um, you know, the bombs and things like that could potentially be pretty handy for them. You know, as as easy as uh, this game is for someone like myself, um... You know, I always have to remember that, you know, I've been playing video games a very long time. And there are... Especially, like, like younger folks... Uh, that have not been playing games as much, or they're just, they're just starting to play games. You know, especially old school games. You know, this is an old school game. You know, a kid these days is probably going to start off on something more modern, but, uh, you know, their old fogey parents, <laughs> like myself, will, uh, maybe introduce them to some of the games that they grew up with. And, uh, so some of these, these youngins will end up playing a game like this, and maybe they'll struggle with it, despite it being, uh, to me, like, an, uh, what I would call an easy game. So, so things like the bombs could be potentially quite useful for them. Dance, Kim, dance. <laughs> I love it when games have animations. You can really dance in this game, wow. <laughs> It'd be nice if you could hold up and like she'd look up or like do a little jig or something. But yeah, I love it when games uh, have a bunch of animation frames for simple things like turning left and right. Because then you can dance to the music. Although the Power Rangers soundtrack is more like rock and stuff, it's probably like, probably less like jigging and dancing, more like you know, like nodding your head, pumping your fist, stuff like that. <laughs> Kim should have a fist pump animation. All right, getting kind of sloppy here with the gameplay, but I mean, I I, I didn't practice this. I just kind of. I played this like two weeks ago, ran through it once for the first time in five or six years, and then today just randomly decided to come up with this this video series idea, which could very well be a mistake in the end. <laughs> but yeah, this is apparently Gnarly Gnome, and he just teleports all around the place, and as long as you hit him, you'll be able to get like a two or three hit combo in. Now he's gonna eventually teleport around really fast, so you have to kind of watch, you know, just be looking at the screen closely, just to see where he lands. Now, he's obviously not in that phase yet, but he will get there. It looks like if he's high up, I can just do a jump attack. Whoops. You can also bomb, just like that, which, not the best bomb. Mainly because of his teleport animation.
Whoops! Teleport right on top of me. He's, he's obviously influenced by Dracula from Castlevania. <laughs> Castlevania 1 specifically. Uh, that last boss fight, Dracula has a tendency of just... You know, he, his first phase is just teleporting all over the place, but... He has a tendency of just teleporting right on top of you, and it's sometimes it like impossible to avoid, and he does a lot of damage. So that that part where he teleported on top of me reminded me of that. Uh, we will do uh, I don't know. Let's do let's do Trini on this level. The Yellow Ranger. Yeah, Billy's the Blue Ranger. Jason is the Red Ranger. Duh. <laughs> I know I'm gonna have somebody correct me in the comments before they even get to level two, where I, I realized I said the wrong name. <laughs> um, and actually, on my my first Power Rangers playthrough, I, I still get the occasional comment from, from you know, on a, on a video from years ago, and uh, I still get corrections on it. Where I think it's, it's it's the sort of same thing where it's like I think I corrected myself later on in the video, but. People will still leave comments, you know, telling me how wrong I am. It's like, oh, I, I know I'm wrong! I, I know it! Uh, I even said it in the video, I'm pretty sure. Um, it is what it is. YouTube's kind of a, a weird uh, ecosystem. The dynamic between uh, video creator and viewer can be, let's just say, interesting sometimes. Yeah, so the whole crowd control thing, it's not... In a lot of situations, it's not really all that necessary. You know, trying to throw enemies on one side of the screen, but it's just like trying to trying to play things like extra safe, right? So this level will actually involve swimming later. So, the, you know, despite the simple, like, belt scroller gameplay... Ooh, got some chicken. It's almost uh, on the same level as Castlevania wall meat. Except it's in a box, not a wall. Um... Yeah, despite the simp simplistic, like, belt scroller gameplay, you know, there are... There are ways that the development team, you know, managed to mix things up, which is... Which is nice. So, you know, like, this level has swimming. Other levels have elevators. Uh, another level has staircases. Lots of staircases. Which is just interesting, because, like, things have been relatively flat so far in the game. Um, other levels have more more actual, like, stage hazards. There's one level where it's sort of like a science lab or something like that. I don't remember exactly what it is. Um, but it has, like, this really dangerous laser that, which I'll point out once we get to it. So, yeah, really simple game, but, you know, they managed to mix things up. And then the last couple levels are fighting stages. Which is interesting. It, it's, it was kind of interesting to end the game with fighting levels. Um, you know, back in the day, it was really cool. Nowadays, it's like now that I play it, I'm kind of like, hmm. I feel like there could have been like a smoother transition to the fighting game parts, or maybe have the fighting game parts be interspersed between the side-scrolling parts. Like instead of lumping the fighting game parts all the way at the very end, um, you know, after like level three. Um, put one of the fighting game sections, because that's how it works in the TV show. They're not always, like, you know, sometimes partway through the TV show, they have to, you know, transform into the Megazord. Um, right? And so it, it's like a, there's a mixture on the TV series, whereas this, it's like, oh, you know, you go through five platforming levels, and then it's, boom, two fighting game stages, and then it's over. So I do feel like the uh, pacing... Uh, or progression could have been a little bit better. I think having the fighting game stages interspersed um, in the in, you know throughout the main campaign would have been made things a little more interesting. And then you could have done like a, a truly unique final boss on top of that. I think that would have been um, you know really cool. So, but yeah, this is <laughs> obviously 30 years after the fact now. Uh, 30 30 plus years after the fact, and. Um, you know, it is what it is. But it's interesting just commenting about game design and stuff like that, and, and thinking about what, what could have been, or, or what could have been swapped around a little bit to make a, uh, maybe more interesting experience. Now, unfortunately, um, when you're swimming like this, you can't actually attack. I don't think I can use my bomb underwater either. Nope, it's not letting me. So, yeah, you can't really do anything underwater, so... We'll try to just, you know, swim below. 
But yeah, I mean, there's some interesting mechanics here to mix things up. It's it's cool. So I'm gonna attack this. Got some health, which is good. And we just use our wall jump here. I don't think there are really like any major secrets or anything like that in this game, so you know, nothing to really point out in terms of like, you know. Uh, illusory walls that you can just go through for, for hidden power-ups or something like that. I don't think there are any secret rooms or anything like that. I always love me some good, uh, wall jumping, though. And the wall jumping in this is pretty decent. You know, it's smooth, it's not too hard to do. So yeah, I mean, that's just the wall jumping is another way to mix up the gameplay. You know, very simplistic gameplay, but little mix-ups like that can go a long way. See if we can come up this way. Just avoid that putty completely. Obviously, we want to avoid these blades. And I think I have to actually come back down here. Oh. Let's, uh... Mm. Okay, there we go. Definitely don't want to lose any health if I can avoid it, because you will notice one thing about this game is enemies do do a lot of damage. It is definitely a game where, um, you know, you can get hurt pretty badly pretty fast. That is, I would say that's... Primarily where this game's difficulty comes from is, you know, enemies can, they can hurt. Um, you know, be it in the, the side-scrolling levels or the fighting game stages near the end, uh, you know, enemies can really just do some damage. Definitely want to stay up on this upper platform, otherwise you can't attack when the water comes up. I like that spin attack, too. That final hit just, it looks like it hurts. <laughs> it looks like it would hurt. If you got smacked by that, yeah. You would, uh, you'd be feeling that for days. Just kind of skip through all this stuff. Ooh, power up up there. Hmm. Sweet. Is there another one up there? Hmm. I don't think it's possible, possible for me to get that. Because I don't think I can, yeah, I can't even swim that high. Um, maybe, just maybe. Oh, we got it. Nice. So you have to use your bomb to get it. Hell yeah. Yeah, I just figured something out. I didn't even know that was there. <laughs> That's cool. You see my, my health bar is purple now. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a bomb anymore because of that. Or maybe I'll get one right here. Hmm, I don't know. Let's see. More health. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm guessing my health bar is maxed out, because it hasn't really changed color. I guess purple is as high as it goes. Right, we're almost... almost there at the boss, I'm guessing. Yep. So this guy is apparently called Eye Guy. And we'll just whack him. He's got a lot of little, like, baby projectiles, which is kind of fun to avoid. And he's got lasers. Docks and shoots lasers, and you can just jump over those. Now, unfortunately, there's no wall jumping on this, uh, this arena, as far as I can tell. Likes to dive bomb you, apparently. Whoops! I thought he was gonna duck and do that. Oh, I didn't jump in time. That was my fault. I think that's it. Yeah, he. Oh, okay. No, there we go. That's right. He flies around for a little bit. Just do your jumping attack. Kind of like the first boss where he, you know, his last phase, he's just. It's just his head floating around. Uh oh, not good. This is where having the bomb would have been handy, but I used it on that uh, secret canister. It's not really secret, you, you know, you can technically see it, but it's just out of, uh, out of your distance, or out, just out of your, your, your vision, that uh, you'll probably miss it. Alright. So we will do Zack on this level. So basically, we have this platforming level, and then we have one more, and then we'll go to the fighting game stages. 
We've been already go we've already been going for like 30 minutes. So like I said, this is like a 40 to 60 minute long playthrough. And Zach here, he likes to break dance his way to victory. Ducking kick is actually pretty good. It seems to do pretty good damage. Oh, that's right, you can't wall jump with, uh, until you're in your ranger form. Man, this is actually better than his regular punch, let's just use that. Yeah, those little drones, you can actually do a wall jump later on and attack them. But right now, can't really do that. Duck and kick to victory. Who needs breakdancing? Not Zack. <laughs> oh, I got jump kicks. I was trying to jump kick him. Watch out for those chandeliers. Classic video game trope, especially like, you know, when it comes to beat em ups in particular. Or Castlevania, even Castlevania has some sh falling chandeliers. Yeah, your your ducking kick is actually a lot faster. <laughs> wow. I mean, it takes four hits on these guys, but still, the four hits with your ducking kick is faster than your four hits of standing. See if we can. Nope, I was gonna say try to throw him, get him on the other side of the screen. Alright, Ranger time. And this is apparently the genie. He kind of looks like a genie. So, Zack has an axe. It's pretty badass looking. I love axes like this in video games, they're so cool. He's also got a heavy swing, just like uh, Jason and Trini do. But overall, you know, I guess some of these rangers are kind of like, homogenized in a way. In terms of like, their attack types. But Billy and Kim, you know, blue and uh, pink ranger, they've got more unique attacks. Which makes them, I think, a little more interesting to play as. So, you know, we have the obligatory, uh, belt scroller, uh, elevator section. It's, an, it's a, another trope from this type of game. Very common in, in both this and, and, uh, you know, your standard brawlers. You beat him up with the Z axis. You know, Streets of Rage, Final Fight, Double Dragon. Uh, the Japanese actually kind of like, uh, you know, lump these into the same genre. They, they call them both belt scrollers. Um, although, to me personally, I like to differentiate them. Because, you know, uh, beat em ups with the Z axis do play quite differently than, you know, a simple belt scroller like, like this. These have, uh, more of a focus on platforming, uh, generally speaking. Go ahead and jump and hit that guy, and wall jump. I wonder how many, like, little kids back in the day got stuck at this, not knowing they can wall jump. Well, I guess technically they, they would have known how to wall jump by this point, because you're kind of forced to do it on, uh, the previous level, so... But I wonder how many kids got stuck on previous levels, not knowing they could wall jump. <laughs> so, unlike being able to pick your rangers, uh, and... You know, play any level with any ranger, you cannot pick your levels. So, you know, you have to play the levels in the same order every time you play. Just watch out for falling objects. I don't care if you're a power ranger, a steel beam like that should kill you pretty much instantly.
Yeah, so that's, this is what I was talking about earlier, where there's, like, a lot of stairwells and whatnot uh, later on in the game, which kind of mixes up the uh, left-to-right... Uh, the feel of the left-to-right movement. Also, there's, there's more actual platforming. I assume you die instantly when you fall into a pit. I don't know. Oops, took a hit. He just does a simple spread shot. You just need to jump at the right time, it looks like. Oh, same with down there. You can use a bomb. I do love the bomb effects. They're they're very nice looking. Yeah, using the Super Nintendo's uh, transparency capabilities, or using its using some graphical tricks to get the transparent effect, which is awesome. Whether it's actual real transparency, or it's uh, just a, a, you know, a programming trick to, you know, make it look like it's transparent. It doesn't really matter, as long as it looks transparent. <laughs> the Super Nintendo uh, did that very well. I'm gonna jump over these. Whoops. Okay. It looks like uh, I can't really jump kick unless I I move pretty aggressively to the left or right. If I if I you know you do have a little bit of mid air control, and if I jump and just do a tiny bit of movement, uh, I'll actually just do like my straight ahead attack with my axe as opposed to jump kicking. It looks like that's it. Bye bye, genie. You know, thinking about the- thinking about it, I need to try to play the, uh, Power Rangers, uh, the movie video game. Which is apparently, it's a more traditional beat-em-up with the Z-axis, and supposedly it's pretty good. Alright, so the last one that we have not played as is Billy. And we will play as Billy. Yeah, Billy's got a, a great set of moves, and he's kind of like the goofy, funny character when you play. You know, he, he's kind of like looking down as he punches. <laughs> and then uh, for the more beefy enemies, he's got this uh, really powerful but kind of like goofy end combo. Although, you know what's funny is... <laughs> I probably don't even need to use it. I can probably just do his ducking kick over and over just like with Zack. Yep. Which, I'm just gonna take advantage of, because, why not? It's- it's still faster than doing my actual combo. You got a sword, I've got a foot. It's like a little baby tap as <laughs> he ducks, and it's more effective than a sword. Yeah, so by this point in the game, it's kind of like, eh, you know, all the levels have been pretty similar in terms of gameplay. And you know, despite some mix-ups here and there, it's still very simplistic gameplay at its core. So this is where I kind of started zoning out. I'm like, eh. But at least I get to show off uh, Billy's sweet attacks when he uh, transforms. Much like uh, Kim, he's got a long-range uh, attack, which is sweet. But then he's got this spinning, um, attack. So the Alpen B is just his spinning attack that is basically at the end of his, his combo. Do some crowd control. That's right, those guys just take one hit. They're actually throwing me off because in previous levels, only the gray putties die in one hit, but now it's like these uh, these brown ones die in one hit. I wonder if that was because of a color palette choice. Like, they're still technically the same as the gray putties. 
but maybe because of the colors they were using in the background, they, they had to change the palette on the sprite. Some old video games do that, uh, depending on, you know, what colors are used in the scenery. Some because it's it's a necessary choice, like, you know, in some NES games. Um, you know, it's a console with a very limited color palette. Um, but in the 16-bit era, sometimes it could, or like even like, well, it's in the 16-bit era, sometimes it was just a design choice. Just avoid those those lasers. Very slow lasers. There's there's not a lot in this game that's like super threatening. There's not a lot, lot, there aren't really, I can't think of like any projectiles in the platforming levels where like, they shoot really fast. Like those machine gun guys, it's probably about as fast as enemies shoot in this game. And it's not even that fast. Yeah, so if, if I had to pick a ranger that I would just stick with for the whole playthrough, you know, I'd go with either Billy or Kim, blue or pink, just because, you know, they've got long-range attacks. Very handy. They do lots of hits. I was gonna say, I wanted to try to get that guy on the, the other side of the screen, but... Again, these, these green putties, they just, they bounce all over the damn place, and so that can be a little irritating. The other stages, this one does feel a little on the long side. Lots of turrets and things like that. Funny enough, the turrets actually die really, really fast. You would think those would be things that would take uh, a little bit longer to, to take out. Another elevator. All right, so I think this part coming up is actually where we see that big laser I was talking about. It actually makes uh, some noise. And you can either get ab above or below it. So I chose to get above. Whoops. Oh, okay. Now there is a point where it, it'll stop doing damage or it'll stop having the capability of doing damage. And I'm not sure exactly where in the laser pattern that is. But yeah, so like I could I could just drop right through it there. But you notice that the enemy got hit when it was like at its widest. Yeah, pretty cool visual effect too. Close to the end here. This is the part of the playthrough where I start getting tired. <laughs> and I start for start not having things to say. It's also that, that point in the day where like my room is starting to get warm and I think it's having an effect on me. And it's also been several hours since I ate. I need to get some food in me right when I'm done with this. So yeah, this guy is apparently the Dark Warrior, and he's not all that challenging. He can teleport, as you can see. Just kind of watch where he's going, and then just try to line up your attack with wherever he's landing. And you'll pretty much be good to go. And I could even use my bomb if I wanted to. It's like, why not? 
Yeah, the way he jumps is actually another good reason to use Billy or Ken, because they have, you know, really long-range attacks. So you can keep your distance a little bit, or not have to move as far to, you know, collide with the enemy. That's it! Dance, Billy, dance! Alright, now we're on to the fighting game sections. Transformation mode. They did a really good job on the, uh, the title screen theme, or the, the the main Power Rangers theme. Although the voice sample is definitely, uh, definitely probably could have been, could have been done a little bit better. <laughs> it was great back in the day, but, you know, you don't really notice how out of date some things sound until, you know, time passes. Using that mode 7 for the Megazord in the background. Alright, so this is totally different. Uh, you have a bunch of different attacks. You can you can swipe with your sword, you can punch, you can, you know, you know, attack forward, downs, and down, whatever. One thing I like to do though is do the double tap, which allows you to run or dash. Pressing X also allows you to do specials. It uses up your POW meter uh, down below. Uh, I do recommend using these. It's n not like Ultraman where it's like required to, you know, to beat the boss. Like in Ultraman, uh, you have to actually, you know, charge up. Oh, speaking of Ultraman, that'll be another like good quick play to do. Um, you know, in Ultraman, you have to actually charge it up all the way to do, basically, a finishing move. Whereas this, you don't really have to do that. But I should be more aggressive with the, uh, the, the double tap, because he doesn't really like it very much. The kick can be really good, though, especially on the, uh, the next guy we'll have to fight. Yeah, and so it just does a finisher on its own, so it's... It's pretty brain dead, you know? But that's, you know, it's still fun. It's, a, it's another interesting way to mix up gameplay and also tie in to, you know, the fact that your rangers in the TV show do morph into the Megazord and other vehicles for that matter. All right, so this part is gonna be a little shysty. I, I might not do all that well on this guy but we'll kind of see what happens. It's good to be aggressive on him. Also, holding back uh, will allow you to block like it's Street Fighter. So, just something to keep in mind. Now, this guy actually has two forms. It's the second form that I really have to worry about. So you get his health all the way down, and then he swaps over to his second phase. And every time you continue, you have to do the first phase over again. So basically, the Megazord charges up, he says no. And so, yeah. More of the same, but he's a little more aggressive now. Ooh, that did a lot of damage, even though I blocked it. Very interesting. Ooh, 
we got it. Nice, first try. Very good. I, I mean, as you can see, my health bar is pretty low. I got really close to dying here, so... Um, when I played through this a couple weeks back, uh, it, it probably took me like three or four tries to get this guy, maybe, maybe even more. I think I actually had to continue a few times. Uh, so that's two lives for each continue. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, it might have been like five or six tries that I did. So, but yeah, that's it. That's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers for the Super Nintendo. And, um, yeah, it's a really fun game. You know, it's, it's nice revisiting this one every now and then because it is a pretty chill playthrough. It doesn't really require a whole lot of effort. And uh, it's got some, some kick in music and uh, just generally fun gameplay. Now, the ending just kind of drags on. It's, it's this for a while, and then they're at the uh, clubhouse basically just, you know, chilling and hanging out as the credits scroll. So. Um, but yeah, that's the whole game. Now, if you wait until after the credits, uh, it actually gives you three passwords. Um, they, passwords haven't been described all that well on, like, walkthroughs online, but what they do is they take you back to the fighting game levels, but they allow the opponent to be controlled by a second player. So they're effectively versus fighting modes now. So you use a password to go to the versus fighting mode, and then you can play with a friend, and try to beat each other up, like it's Street Fighter 2 or something. So, kind of a nice bonus. Uh, would be fun to actually try that sometime with an actual human being. You know, assuming I actually, you know, meet other human beings, because I don't think I really know many right now. <laughs> Especially not ones that would be willing to play Power Rangers on the Super Nintendo with me. But, uh, I digress. The point is, if you have friends, uh, it would be a fun mode to mess around with, and I'd, I'd suggest trying it out. Um, yeah, so... But yeah, this is pretty much most of the rest of the ending. There's a little bit more. Um, where Rita Repulsa, you know, has, uh, you know, her image shows up. It's actually kind of funny, she's like the big bad guy in the TV series, uh, along with Goldar and whatnot, but they're nowhere to be found as, like, enemies or bosses in this game. So, uh, I, I do think that was kind of an oversight. I'm not sure why they didn't have them anywhere as, like, main villains. Um, but you'll recognize them at least if you've watched the TV series from back in the day, so... So, presented by Bandai. Yep, and here we go. Uh, it'll scroll up, we'll see Rita, and then it will give us passwords. You should have been a boss fight, <laughs> or, or like involved in 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 some boss fight. <laughs> it's a very bare bones game. You can tell like some corners were probably cut. They might have like originally intended her to be somewhere in the game as a threat, but but no, <laughs> she's like a core villain in the series. You see her like every episode, and uh, yeah, nowhere nowhere to be found outside the ending in the game itself. So. Yeah, there you go, guys. That's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I hope you enjoyed uh, this new slash old format of gameplay. Um, if there are any other games that uh, you know of that you'd like to see presented like this, um, you know, drop, drop them down in the comment section below. Uh, if you've been a long time watcher, um, let me know how you like this return to my old school Let's Play format. This is not replacing my new Let's Play format with all the editing and stuff. It's just a way to get more content to you guys that's not in the form of a live stream or something like that, so... Uh, but yeah, let me know what you thought, uh, and if you have any thoughts about Power Rangers itself, or the series in general, drop those, uh, you know, drop that feedback in the comments down below too, I'd love to hear uh, if you've played this game growing up, or if, if you've never played it, but... Uh, I, I, I can't even freaking talk. I, the thing about this format is like, I'm... I just don't know how to start and end it. I swear, I, I didn't... Uh, I'm just stumbling over myself right <laughs> Holy crap! Alright, you know what? Just post a comment, let me know you got to this point, and post whatever you want. Just You can even say, like, I'm a great guy or something like that. Thanks for the content, Austin, but... <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I'll see you in the next one, whether it's a live stream, proper Let's Play, or this more casual quick play format. And until the next one, Take it easy.